The conference realignment debacle continues as more and more quotes and facts begin to roll out. This time, John Wildhack is the one uh, providing these. So Brad and I will tell you why we're not too excited about it, and Brad will continue to suffer from his cat allergy. It's Locked On Syracuse. It's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is this, Brad? I'm gone one episode, and you can't go near cats? What's the story here? Yeah, it's brutal. I don't know. I've had two cats for years, and now, only now, I'm getting an allergy to them, which is tough. It's a good thing that my parents don't watch or listen to this podcast, but my grandparents do, so they might relay the message, and that won't make me popular. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen every day. We are free and available Wherever you get your podcast, and we'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. So Brad, as he rubs his eyes, yeah, I'm told it listeners. makes it worse, but it feels so good. I, I don't know <laughs> in the so. moment, Brad, and then in five minutes, you're going to be feeling that. Uh, <laughs> this is not a cat allergy podcast, right? We have to move on to, to the All meat right. of this episode. Uh, listen, this conference realignment stuff is cool and all, but it's not necessarily cool for Syracuse. Uh, we did an episode about this couple, a couple episodes about this one you did without me and one we did together. Uh, it's our last two episodes, I believe. Maybe there's one in between. Eh, um, like we've talked about it. You know, the whole story is what should Syracuse do? Uh, nobody really has the answers. John Wildhack spoke in front of the press semi recently uh, to hopefully give some of those answers. And I can't say that what he said was all that promising. Uh, the man went in front of the podium and basically said that he didn't have really a, a plan at all, or at least one that he's not willing to share as Brad continues to rub his eyes. Um, <laughs> that play. Way to paint a picture. I'm trying, man. You're the play-by-play guy here, but I'm trying. Uh, there was a question asked, and this is an article that we are reading from Syracuse.com written by Chris Carlson. It's a really good read, so we uh, go ahead and read it. It's fantastic. I urge you to go over to Syracuse.com, give them a couple clicks, because uh, it's good stuff. Uh, they asked, will the rise of super conferences omit Syracuse? Uh, and Wildhack said, quote, I do not know if that's inevitable or not. It could clearly go that way. Dude. Like, <laughs> you're supposed you can't to say that. Like, you just you can't. can't. Even dude, if you're it's laying true. down your guns, Even dude. Like, true. fight. And we know it's true. That's why we're talking about this. That's why Syracuse fans tune in to listen to podcasts when they see the, t- the title of this podcast because they know that the Orange are in grave danger. But if you have the captain of your ship saying that the boat might sink, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> that boat's going down. <laughs> it's going to sink. He I'm sorry. The last one on it when it does, because Aries a terrible captain. Yeah. Um. So Wildhack's lack of confidence, I mean, obviously doesn't really uh, do much for those surrounding him because, hey, I mean, this guy is supposed to be the only person who is surely dedicated to saving all of Syracuse athletics. All the fans could say they are, and all the coaches could say they are, but at the end of the day, John Wildhack, it, it is his job to be dedicated to each and every program on the Hill. This man does not sound like he is apt to do that. It could clearly go that way. Dude, do something about it then. So they ask him, basically, are you going to do something about it? What do you think uh, about the ACC? It's supposed to go through 2036. Uh, There's supposed to be full or 14 full-time schools, blah, blah, blah. He says, that's the trail to follow, in my opinion. So you're going to just follow along with the ACC like it's going to be all hunky-dory is did I read that right am I wrong you you read it right I don't know if he necessarily means it and and now we're starting to mind read or attempt to mind read John Wildhack so that's a slippery slope but 
it might be the type of thing that you say for bargaining power. It might be the type of thing that you say what bargaining power. You're saying, okay, we're going to wait it out for this thing to die. That he is saying that his hope and no, that what he's going to go with, he's saying that he's going to be gonna loyal stick with the no. ACC. What he's saying is he's going to be loyal to the power five conference that took them in that the ACC didn't have to do that. Now they did and they benefited from it. And, and, it's not like they were sacrificing to bring Syracuse in, but John Wildhack is trying to be loyal to the conference, which I do respect. That's something that almost no other team is doing right now. Now, to be fair, we don't know if it's sincere. If the Big 12 called John Wildhack tomorrow, would he not pick up? I don't think well, so. What I was about to say is I could see that being a good answer if the case is that he is calling around and saying, will you take us, will you take us, will you take us? And he wanted his public image to kind of be like, no, like we want to be here. We want to be in the ECC. Uh, and maybe that pays dividends down the line if nothing else works out. But you, he's he, behind closed doors. That man has to be thinking, how the heck am I going to save this program? Yeah. What conference are going to be, are we going to hop into to hopefully parlay it into one of those super conferences? Because if you're Syracuse right now, you are looking down two potential paths. College athletics, obviously, we talked about going towards the NFL kind of style where there's going to be two huge conferences. Uh, either he can try and get into one of those or you are just going to be a, a sorrowing program in the, in the future. You're going to be a bad team. One yeah. that used to be respected. So in, in this article, they, they talk about how Wild Hack says – uh, you know, we're a respected brand and I'm going to continue to do whatever I can to to keep growing it and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are a national brand. We're respected. We're going to work tirelessly to continue to grow our brand. We're trying everything. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to best position Syracuse for success. Uh, at least he had to say that. At least he that's did. The only no, thing we're that we about know. that. that nah, that's the only thing that we know. We don't know who's calling Syracuse, if Syracuse is calling any other conference. We don't know if Wild Hack is being sincere. What we do know is that Wild Hack is rooting for Syracuse here, and he does want the programs to succeed. Maybe he does think that the ACC is the way to go. I disagree. I think you do as well. But we know that Wild Hack wants the best for the programs. I don't know if he's making the right decision. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's making the right decision. I could see a couple – I could see one way uh, – that staying with the ACC would work. Uh, and I will tell you that right after I read this advertisement, it's LinkedIn, baby. Create a free job at LinkedIn. That's what you're going to want to do. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. Go create that free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small business small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. And did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Brad, you got something to read. I know it. <laughs> All right, we'll tell you a little bit about a, a new exciting development here. <laughs> NFL Top 50, because I ask you, Bones, which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, Bones. I hold on, it. hold on, hold on. That cat allergy is getting to your brain, Brad. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm, I'm, more, I'm just worried about you. That's all. Mm. Keep rubbing those eyes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, here's what I was going to say, though, about the ACC. The one way that I could see the ACC working 
is if it teamed up with the dying Pac-12. Now, say this happens. So right now what you're looking at is the Big Ten and the SEC probably becoming super conferences, right? And you're going to have that NFL kind of relationship where you're going to have the North versus the South or whatever you wanted to call it. Why not the East versus the West? Why doesn't the West Coast fight the East Coast and you have the same kind of NFL kind of style with the Pac-12 and the ACC? I think that could totally work. If they could get that done, that would be huge, and that would be something that keeps Syracuse in the ACC and keeps them relevant. Maybe. Uh, I just think that if you're looking at the Pac-12 combining with the ACC, especially if Clemson's on their way out of the ACC, then it's basically just the crumbs. And I don't know how how much people are going to want to watch the crumbs, like Wake Forest versus but why would they want to Washington watch them, State. Why would they want to watch them in the Big Ten of the ACC? Because they're going to be playing bigger brands. That's what it's all about, right? Like Minnesota but they're just going to get stomped, right? Yeah, but Minnesota games just become more valuable when they lose to UCLA instead of, I don't know, name, uh, Iowa, right? I, I just think... I just think that it's all about the brands. It's all about teaming up and riding the coattails of brands. And the way I see it, the ACC is just going to be a bigger version of itself if it combines with the Pac-12, assuming there's no big brand with them. USC is gone. UCLA is gone. Clemson, hypothetically, is gone. So what's the difference? It's just more teams at that point and more travel. That's the whole point of teaming up with a bigger conference. Yeah, no, I get that, but I'm going along with I, I'm basically I'm humoring John Wildhack here, and I'm saying what could happen to make the ACC continue to work because it's not gonna if they just sit there and do nothing, they will be nothing, right? I mean, they okay, can't okay. just sit there. So, okay, if if Syracuse stays in the ACC and the ACC is determined to continue to exist, then I think they only have one option and that is expansion. And it's not combination, it's expansion. So you're looking at basically what the Big 12 did or is doing, which is, okay, we lost Oklahoma and we lost Texas. Who are we going to bring in? The Big 12 turns around, they bring in Houston, they bring in Cincinnati, they bring in UCF. Those are the crown jewels of Group of Five. Is there anyone that you can bring in? Now, Let's assume that geography matters a little bit. You are the Atlantic Coast Conference after all. Just a little bit. Who can you bring in? That's the way I see it. Who can you promote from the group of five? I don't have teams off the top of my head. I have one. That's what you're asking. Okay, I go have ahead. one team. Coastal Carolina. That's it. Okay. Like, sure. And but... you're not getting excited about Coastal Carolina. I get it. Uh, you kind of shouldn't be excited about Coastal Carolina. You're not excited about them because they're not a Power 5 team. But of all the group of fives, you think about it, like their baseball is really good, if that matters. Their football is good enough. And their basketball is weak. But in theory, it gets better over time in the ACC. But that's what you're looking at if you stay in the ACC. How about the because, Raging because the Pac-12? Yeah, I guess. I, I guess, right? I'm just throwing names out there. No, I, I know, I, and you kind of have to. That's what that's what this is going to become. But I wouldn't. The main reason that you have to think about expansion and not combination with the Pac-12 is because I think the Pac-12 is going to essentially combine with the Big 12. That you're going to have some crumbs in there. Not everyone from the Pac-12 is going to make it into the Big 12. But you're looking at a lot of those schools that you're thinking of: Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado. Even they're on their way. To the Big 12. Okay, so then what if you throw the Big 12 into this mix and you take those three conferences that kind of get left out by the Big 10 and the SEC and you make them one big conference? You could. You could. You and could you put those brands right back into place. Conference USA and just be the rest of the people, because the rest of the teams. I think we agree. World. We agree in the fact that expansion is required to survive if you're those three conferences. Um, but I think it's a, I mean, it's a combination of combination and expansion. You've got to band together to survive here. The, the big 10 and the SEC are leaving you behind. They don't care about you. They're the bigger brands that everybody's kind of decided that that's where the money is fine. Now, what are you going to do? Uh, they need to be calling up each other and going, all right, guys, what are we going to do right now? Um, and I think creating, doing 
mirroring this, the potential success of what the Big Ten and the SEC are doing could be the answer. So let me ask you this, though. And and it's not – maybe it's a loser's mentality. But if you're I think John you are Wildback, pessimistic about this. You have to be pessimistic about it and think about I disagree. it. disagree. You have to be optimistic think about, about it. Think about what's happened. Okay. If it's going to succeed – If you're John Wildback, you are one of the ACC athletic directors. Or, yeah. Right? Athletic directors. With the Big Ten, with the Pac-12, you formed an alliance that happened a year ago. The alliance is broken. If you're John Wildhack, do you have any? Do you have the same amount of trust in other conferences, other teams, other ads to hold up their end of the bargain and ally together? Because right now it's an arms race. And it's just, I'm going to get stronger. But what you're suggesting is kind of an alliance. I think, well, because, okay, so there's only so many good teams to go around, right? I think that much is clear. Yeah. Uh, and the good ones want to get on, on the fun party, which is whatever the Big Ten and the SEC are doing. So, yeah, I mean... It doesn't look – you're obviously – good. there is no situation in which the ACC, Pac-12, or Big 12 are nearly as good as the Big 10 or SEC. But it's about not being as bad as the worst you can possibly be. It's about not fizzling out. I understand. And I think the other thing that you have to think about here is – and maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, but you have to th- – it's like a game of chess. You just have to think ahead. I don't know if all of the Big 12 teams that are still there want to be there. Like, you think Oklahoma State would rather be in the Big 12 than the SEC? No, but, that like, of course not. I think Syracuse would rather be in the Big 10, right? Sure, sure, sure. But It's but like an obvious are, thing. Right, but what I'm saying is you're you're talking about banding. To, this is this is what I'm talking about. You're talking about banding together. Yeah, but it's a, do they have a one chance? big conference. Yeah, they do have a chance, especially over time. And, and what's going to end up happening, if, if the way I see it, if you do that, then your conference is just going to become a farm system for the SEC and the Big Ten. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be, okay, Oklahoma State, you played really well in the Big 12, right? So we're bringing you into the SEC as the league expands. Oh, we need another team? Let's go ahead and bring in Baylor. And now that Baylor might, and Oklahoma that State That very are well might be what the end of college athletics is. But again, like, I said this in the last episode, and it still rings true. It's about what you're doing in the meantime. It's about what the next five years are, because like we all know, that might be what, to those two super conferences are probably going to rule college football, and every single team who's anybody who's anybody, not to use that cliche, is going to be there. And it's about, can you position yourself to get a spot, right? So it's about what are you going to do in the next five years to boost up your program and be one that's enticing enough for a Big Ten or an SEC to want to take a chance on you and want to say, okay, you're good enough to be in our party. Because if you don't think that's that's the solution, Brad, then what is? Going back to the Big East for Syracuse? No, it's not really a solution. It's a last resort, I would say. I, I don't know. I just – all I know is – Everything is so unpredictable and so unstable if you're not in the Big Ten or the SEC. That's that's all I know. So that's the other thing is that I feel like this podcast might come off as us ripping John Wildhack and what he's doing or what he's not and what he's saying and what he's not. But the bottom line is, and I think Syracuse fans have to hear this, Wildhack was dealt a, a losing hand. Now, it's going to be on him, and if if it doesn't work out, then I'm telling you he's going to be remembered as the guy who – ruin Syracuse athletics fair or not that's what's going to happen uh but he was dealt he was dealt a losing hand Syracuse is at least recently don't get mad at me the old Syracuse fans the old the all-time Syracuse fans they're not a football school they're a basketball school and they're a basketball school that's not even that good anymore and the football is a complete liability and their conference is falling apart what is John Wildhack supposed to do we can nitpick what he's supposed to say, what he's supposed to, you know, think. But at the end of the day, there's really not much that you can disagree with because what else is he supposed to do? He's saying he's being loyal to the ACC, and you can disagree with him on that. 
We're saying that he needs to get into the Big 12. But honestly, it might not be that easy. The Big it's 12. It's definitely not that easy. No one's saying it's easy. So, okay, so we're we're out here. And, and I, I'm saying the same thing. I'm but just we're saying out here they got to try. They got to try to get into the Big 12. But when that doesn't work, what happens? John Wildhack is, is just resented around Central New York until the end of time because he was the athletic director when Syracuse became Bucknell. Is that it? Oh, you're you're asking me that as if as if like there's another option. There's no other option. He's th- it's this or nothing. So why not try? You have to try. I I know he will. I know he will. I just I just I'm I'm racking my brain trying to think of just a different option and there's there's just really none. Like that's that's it. Right? That that is it. At the end of the day, you can't compete with those other conferences. You can try to band together. I mean, the alliance that we're talking about with the Pac twelve, the Big Twelve, what's left of it. Yeah, you can go and try to do that, but if I'm John Wildhack, I am just so get off my lawn pessimistic right now when it comes to banding together and allying with other teams. And it just really feels like Syracuse against the world. But then again, I'm sure other schools feel like that. You think that Boston College is comfortable right now? No. 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 I think that there are plenty of schools that I think are in a worse situation than Syracuse is. I guess. I, I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I guess Syracuse is in a better position than Boston College. I, I don't know. Um, there aren't many. There are not many Power 5 schools in a worse situation. That I will say. Let's take a time out for one second here because right now I got to tell you a little bit about Bet Online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. We're talking conference realignment because that is the talk of the town these days. So now I'm thinking, Brad, in your eyes, both as a person who covers Syracuse, but also as a Syracuse fan, what is the best case scenario for the fans here? What do you think the best case scenario that Syracuse comes out in? Because I was thinking, like, say that does happen. Say Syracuse joins another Power Five conference. Would you want that as a Syracuse fan? Like, would that be weird if you're the geography so crazy and you're playing teams that you never really played before and it's weird? Would you, at that point, would you rather go back to the Big East just for basketball's sake? It depends on the type of fan you are, right? If you're just the type of fan who is a Syracuse fan through and through and you grew up going to games and you want to go to games, then you're not rooting for the Big 12. You're not rooting for the Big 10. But if you are, honestly, if you're a true Syracuse fan, you understand what's at stake, you'd be crazy not to root for any power conference, the Big 12. Be careful Even the SEC is a true Syracuse fan. No, no. What I'm saying is, if anyone is saying, well, uh, do we really have to go to this conference? I want to go to the games, and they're so far. Then you don't understand what you're missing by not joining a power conference. That's all. That's true. That's totally fair. Um, and, and I so think that, obviously for the betterment of the program and, and fans are just going to have to sacrifice. That's just that if you want your team to compete for national championships, obviously that's not imminent for the football team. But if you want Syracuse basketball to compete for a national championship, then you need them in a good conference. Yeah. And I think there's pros and cons of both outcomes here. Obviously it would be cool to go back to the big East. Um, have that logo on the court again, play against those teams again, maybe actually drum up some kind of rivalry with 
Georgetown again, be in the same conference. That would be cool. Um, St. John's too. But what you're missing out on as a program would just be so monumental. Um, and I mean, it would just having being able to say you're a power five team actually it carries plenty of gravitas and plenty of weight. And you know the what? Country. You know what? If Syracuse went to the Big East, that would hurt. And the reason is not only because they would be essentially a a group of five team. Not it would be they would be. Sure. That's not why it would hurt. It would hurt because that would be the official announcement It'd by John surrender. Wildhack yeah. and the rest of the athletic department that they failed. That's what yeah. it would be. They left the Big East, the house that they built, to go to the ACC and get their tails kicked in football to have the basketball program dissolve into a shell of what it once was. And that if, if that's not a complete failure, I don't know what is. And, and, and we look, take a step back. It has not been good since Syracuse joined the ACC in 13. Basketball has been bad with a couple of surprising Cinderella runs to the Sweet 16 and the Final Four, whatever. Sustainably bad, right? Their best team since 13 was 13 with Tyler Ennis. That was their best team. And that was a Big East team playing in the ACC. Well, uh, Bayheim would argue it was 16. Okay, but 16, they weren't supposed to be that good. They got he hot. He says right all that matters is a final four. And, and and that's fine. You can make that argument. But we're talking about roster top to bottom. It's been bad. Recruiting's been bad. Football recruiting has been awful. And that was the whole point of moving to the ACC. It's been a complete and total failure. And moving back to the Big East would be announcing to the world that moving to the ACC was a complete failure. I don't think John Wildhack wants to do that. Now, he was not the athletic director when Syracuse moved to the ACC. But, and it wouldn't be his mistake technically, but at the same time, get the flag. he get would. The flag. It's a terrible look for the program. Even another way and another angle to explain how miserable the hand that John Wildhack was dealt. I feel bad for the guy, I really do. And let us know what you think about it. Tweet at us on Twitter at LO underscore Syracuse or... Email us at our new email. You'll see it on screen if you're a YouTube viewer. If not, it is losyracuse44 at gmail.com. Send us an email. Let us know what you think about the situation, what you think Syracuse should do, what you think they will do. Ask us any question about the program, about football, basketball, anything. We'd love to answer it. Uh, but for now, that is it for Mr. Klein and I. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen every day. Go get more on the ACC by making Locked On ACC your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked On take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Locked On ACC your second listen. That is Locked On ACC. Brad and I will be back tomorrow as Brad continues to rub those eyes due to the cat allergy. Uh, hopefully it's better tomorrow. I doubt it will be. We will see you then.